Hello, everyone. Um, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us. My name is Damon Osa Inconte Cunningham, and I am the vice president of the Historical African Martial Arts Association. And uh, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us for the premiere of our Hama Live interview series. Uh, today is going to be our first, our first of many, hopefully, interviews. And um, our first interview is going to be with Mr. Maxwell Kalu. Uh, Maxwell is the uh, founder and CEO of African Warrior Fighting Championship. What is African Warrior Fighting Championships, you may ask? Well, if you're a fan of our page, you should already know because we, we are big fans of, uh, what, of Maxwell and his team and what they're doing um, over in, in Nigeria. But basically, um, it's, uh, it's bringing traditional sports from the past to a modern age, making it, making it presentable for a, for a modern age today. Um, but if you don't know anything about them, that's okay because that's what we're here for, and we're going to get it from the man himself. Maxwell, Kalu, how you doing there, brother? I'm good, my man. How are you? I'm I'm good. Glad glad to finally be talking to you. Um, yes, our viewers don't know this is actually the third time that we've tried to uh, we we tried to make this happen. Um, but I'm still learning this program, and I've had some technical difficulties. Um, so I'm just say I'm just saying that I'm glad you're here today, and uh, we're going to make this special today. We made it happen in the end. All okay. right, all right. So um. Where, where, where are you calling from? Where, where are you coming at us? I'm in London at the moment. I'm okay. London. Is, is, is London home? Um, I'm based between London and Lagos. So, London and Lagos. Okay. Yeah, where did so. where'd you grow up? I grew up primarily in London. Primarily uh, in London? But always like yeah, sort of Nigerian parents. I grew up going back to Nigeria. So, okay. But spent well, what, what culture are your parents? Igbo. Ebo, okay. Yeah, Ebo, yeah. Ebo, my, my Ebo people, my Ebo brothers. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so you grew up. In, you grew up in London. Tell, tell us a little bit about your childhood. Tell us about young Maxwell. Young Maxwell. Um, childhood was good, man. I, I, um, I was very lucky that I came. I come from a good family, and I mean, good family in the sense of um, just good values, like genuinely good people. Um, yeah. 
in that to sort of very much raise us um, with the right values, we very much raised us to be proud of our heritage, to sort of carry that heritage forward. Um, but at the same time, sort of gave us the room to explore, gave us the room to understand the world around us. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, massively thankful to my parents. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because it was really, it's really them who set me on the journey with African warriors, to be honest. Okay. Um, in that, um, I've always known about indigenous Nigerian combat sports. And, and my first, first encounter was when, I think I was probably about seven, seven or eight. We went back to Nigeria for Christmas um, and wrestling, um, known in Igbo as Mba, that is like the, sort of culturally, it has huge cultural significance across Nigeria, but okay. in, in Igbo tradition, it's, it's particularly relevant. And that's where I first saw it, man. Like I, I, I got there and I, I saw these sort of huge men um, just competing in wrestling. And that was my first taste of the culture in terms of combat sports. Okay. I always knew it was there, always loved it. Um, and then sort of growing up, just very much pursued combat sports in my own way. Um, okay. so did a lot of kickboxing, did some other stuff. Um, and then, man, it just came to a point where, the picture, <laughs> um, it just came to a point where I was sort of working a career in London, doing well at that, working in PR. Um, and I just really had that, I'm sure a lot of people watching will, will recognize that, that pull to home, um, that, that call to do something bigger, that call to do something that really recognizes um, that heritage that I love and feel so strongly for. Um, and that's how African Warriors came about, man. I said, wow. let's, more, let's, let's do something big. Let's do something that brings these sports that I've been lucky enough to, to see up close mm -hmm. um, by virtue of, you know, having direct access to that heritage and seeing right. that. Um, and let's, let's, let's let the world know. Let's, let's let the diaspora know. Let's, let's, um, just let's, let, let's tell everyone that story. Um, well, we thank you because um, me growing up, I didn't know. Um, I did not know that there were uh, indigenous African martial arts. I knew there were, but I had no access to them. Mm. Um, all, all I had as a young man um, growing up to look at were Tarzan movies, mm. you know, um, and, and, and what, I, what I call the Ooga Boogas, because mm. all they did was run around and scream, Ooga Booga, Ooga Booga, mm. you know. Um, it, it, that wasn't something that I looked up, you know, I was able to look up to. Um, actually, the first uh, positive image of an African warrior that I saw was in uh, the TV series Roots back in the okay. 70s. Yeah. And when Kunta, when he went to, he went away to become a man. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. He was trained by Wrestler. And, 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 and Wrestler was the first positive African warrior that I saw. And from that day forward, I wanted to be wrestler. Yeah. So, um, you know, so so I thank you for bringing this to the young boys and girls in the diaspora who who, who don't know that their heritage is proud and strong. Um, so so I thank you for introducing that to them at an early age. And you know, because I'm 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 45 and I'm just you know I found out about Dombe three years ago. You know, oh. um, I should have been known about Dombe. So, yeah. so so I thank you for for bringing that in, into the world. Um, Thank you. Thank you. So, so tell, tell us, let us know traditionally how, because um, you're a promoter, right? That's what you, mm. okay. So how are traditional, tell, tell us about a traditional Dombe or, or, or wrestling match in, in a local village. How, how were they set up? How do they normally run? Yeah, and even that's, um, this is part of the, the, the task with African Warriors, right? In that Dambe and wrestling are two very different sports, um, which are usually done in very different parts of the country. So um, Dambe is, is primarily practiced by the Alsa tribe in Northern Nigeria. Okay. Um, and wrestling is primarily practiced around Nigeria to be fair, but in very different forms. So most tribes have different forms of it. So Mba to, to Igbo people, um, Gidibo to Yoruba people, um, Kokoa to Northern people, Hausa people. So um, really part of that task has been, this is the first time that these sports are being brought together under one 
umbrella under one brand. Okay. Um, and it's a far cry from how they're usually done. So, um, for example, Dambe. Dambe is, is hugely popular, hugely, hugely popular. And, you know, we're talking not just villages, but we're talking huge arenas where you have thousands of people watching. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know, so Dambe is the form of boxing we feature. So um, native to Northern Nigeria um, and competitors compete with one hand wrapped in rope. Um, there you go. Um, and the other hand is unwrapped, which is used for gauging distance and, and blocking. Um, and then wrestling, which we saw some of it in, in that video that was just shown. Um, that's more of like, a, I guess, what you would call a folk style wrestling, where you have two, two guys competing and the winner is the first person who can get the other ones back to the ground. Um, exactly. And, but yeah, they, they have um, very different traditions. Okay. They have diff um, very interesting cultures surrounding them. So Dambe, my, my favorite part of Dambe is the music. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen this in any of our stuff, but um, music is very much part of the sport. So um, the whole time before they fight, during the fight, after the fight, their musicians playing drums. Um, and they're just going off and like at the same time you have singers who are hailing the fighters, talking about his, um, talking about his background, talking about the village he's coming and representing, talking about um, just really getting them in the zone and ready to fight. And then you have the fighters having some great interaction with that, they love that. Um, they can't fight without the music. Um, and then wrestling, has a sort of similar culture of music, but a different, a slightly different culture, um, where we have this mainly drum based as well. Um, so, like two massively exciting sports, and and for us, the opportunity here is just taking them to the world. And because of Nigeria, has so many different tribes, so many different groups, um, two hundred million people. Many Nigerians are not aware of the different sports that other tribes have. Wow. Um, so some of the events we've done, we've done events in Lagos, um, the sort of big business city in Nigeria, events in Enugu, um, which is southeastern Nigeria. And for many Nigerians, this was the first time they got to see the sports that are not primarily done in their communities. Wow. So, um, you know, we were bringing fighters from, how many fighters from the north of Nigeria to compete in Dambe? Wrestlers from all parts of Nigeria to compete in wrestling. And it was like the first time it's been done. Um, and it was the that's, first time. That's the question I had. How, did, how do you go about getting your talent? How do you bring in mm. fighters? How do you get them uh, to come and be a part of your organization? Man, it, it's, it's all a case of um, grassroots organization. Um, it's very important to be on ground, to have real community relationships. And we do that really well. Um, and that's primarily led by um, Emmanuel, our head of operations and athlete engagement. Okay. So, um, man, that, that's as simple as, you know, we're walking into villages, going to find the chief, the Igwe in the, in, the, in the community and saying, you know, we know your village is known very well for wrestling. Um, and we want to, to give some of your, your talent a, a platform, what do you think? And that's what we did with... Um, the community of Hamafu in Southeast Nigeria and Enugu, where we did um, a great piece with CNN. Um, so we have relationships like that. We also work with- I saw that, that was a very good, that was a very good. It could, because I like how it got the, uh, it got the local, the local uh, uh, chief um, to talk and, and talk about Dambe. And it gave, it gave a cultural um, aspect that I, that I did, I was unaware of. Yeah, and it's, I think that, that cultural, um, aspect is very important because that's really what defines these sports. Um, where what we're doing is very different to the UFC. It's very different to any other yeah. combat sports organization because of we have the we, we are lucky enough to be able to access this amazing culture that surrounds these sports. Um, so so yeah. So to answer your question, we work with athletes and um, sort of villages through to like athlete camps around Nigeria and that's primarily how we source talent. Okay. So um my next question for you is how so how do fighters how do they train? Um you know I, I think you know we're in America we're we're well aware of how wrestlers train and you know kickboxers train but 
how, how what's a typical if somebody if a young young boy says you know what i want to i want to fight don bay he goes to one of your matches he sees he sees he says that i want to be me in in 10 years mm -hmm. um what's his path how, how does he become yeah. a don bay fighter so so typically don bay fighters in particular um they compete and represent houses okay. so um there are, are houses which um so when I was mentioning a singer would be hailing a fighter before he fights. One of the things he'd be saying would be talking about the house that fighter is representing. So um, it's almost like an apprenticeship. So you would go as a young boy and you would just watch. You would watch the experienced fighters fight. Um, when you get big enough, and if you're lucky, they'd let you fight a bit earlier before them. Um, and you just get seasoning like that. Like it's, this is, this is real grassroots. This is real, you learn through experience. Okay. Um, and with wrestling, wrestling is similar. So wrestling is primarily done around times of celebration. So um, villages will have, uh, you know, all of the boys from one village, for example, um, will all be competing um, to, to represent their community um, or to represent their part of the community. Um, and again, it's just through experience. This is a, a lineage which is just constantly passed down. So when they're, when they're very small, they watch. And um, in some of our content we've had, um, we've shown some of like really small boys wrestling and who, who are really actually good. Um, and so it's just done in a way where through age grades, they just get more and more experience. And then they, they reach um, adulthood and, and, you know, you've got a champion there, you've got champions. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just experience and just passing on that history, that lineage, lineage okay. of fighting. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Um, well, what I'm going to do is I have I have one of your videos. Like, again, I was telling before we came on, I was telling you, um, folks, you got to go to his uh, to his Facebook page and his YouTube page as well. African Warrior Fighting Championship. There's a wealth of, uh, I mean, exceptional videos. I mean, these are some high class videos that he has on his page. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show um, I'm going to show a little bit of wrestling. Um, this is one of your videos that talks about wrestling um i believe this was from um battle of lagos this Ooh. was so Okay, so that was some real deal stuff right there, Max. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, you know, that, that's some high quality wrestling you got you got going on. So you mentioned before that um, the different 
tribes and different people across Nigeria have different styles. Mm. Um, how did you settle on one one style, uh, and, and what what are the rules that you have settled on? Yeah, it's a great question, and, and it's really part of what we've been trying to do with African warriors, which is um, put some standards in place. Um, not that you know standards didn't exist already, but really articulate those in a clear way um, and sort of just have them and make them as accessible as possible. Um, so yeah, so for, for wrestling, the, the rules are pretty simple, man. Like it's the first person whose back touches the ground is the loser. Um, so there's no striking. Um, it's pure grappling techniques only. Um, and athletes compete in three three-minute rounds. Um, so in order to win, it's the person who wins two of the three rounds. Okay. Uh, and a round is won through um, having making your opponent's back touch the ground. Okay. What if after three minutes there is no uh, there's no dis no there's no winner no clear winner? It's funny actually. It's a question I always get asked, and we've never actually had that. And I, I, it's a conversation that I've, I've had, especially with like people in the wrestling community in the States or the, or the, or the UK. But they're like, oh, you know, what about like, you know, technical fouls and, you know, what, um, what about people stalling and doing things like that? And my response to that is these are athletes who are fighting for the honor of their villages, who are fighting for the honor of their people. They're not here to stall or win, on, win by technicality. So we've never had it. Fighters okay. go out and they look to win, um, okay. and and that's it. That's all. That's all that they're there. They coming in to do some work, so they're exactly. going to do their work. These are warriors, so and yeah. that's what warriors do. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's how they approach <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Well, um, part of what I like about what you're doing is um, you, you're you, there's a whole lot of misconceptions about Africa. I don't know if you're aware of them. I'm sure you are though. Um, there's a whole lot of misconceptions about Africa. Um, you know, when, when we started the Historical African Martial Arts Association, you, you wouldn't believe the backwards um, the, the backwards comments that, that we had. Um, and and I'm glad that, you know, you're showing the technicality of these. Um, so we have, uh, is there a dance element? Okay, uh, Arasa Malik, we'll, we'll get back to your question in a second. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you're showing that, you know, that there's this is this is technical, you know. These these this is not just two guys coming out here pushing each other and shoving. Um, mm. that, you know that this this is technical. Um, mm. you know, people have said to us, "Did Mac? Did Africans have martial arts? Yes, mm. yes they had. Yeah. They had codified fighting systems. You know, they they train. They pass that knowledge on. Thousands of years old. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, older than you. You know, older than your mm -hmm. culture. Um. So what I, I'm going to do is I, I found a video. Someone took um, a bunch of your videos and they broke them down technically. Um, mm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show it's it's they called it the top 10 um, uh, African warrior finishes. Mm. So um, but basically they, they go through and they give the the classical term mm. Um, mm. for the moves that we see in, in, in your in your organization. Mm. Mm.
So, um, yeah, so I, I was uh, a couple weeks ago, I was talking to a, a he was a Greco Roman wrestler, and he's like, Oh, these Africans can't do anything, and they're da, 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 and they're not technical. And I'm like, Oh, really? I'm like, Well, they're doing fireman carries, uh, single leg, you know, single leg takedowns, and, and I'm naming all the stuff, and he's like, No, they're not. And I send him that video, and um, I never heard from him again. So, um, <laughs> You know, there's a, there's some technical stuff going on with, yeah, with those definitely. wrestlers, man. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, we I, I appreciate it. Um, and I, even, mm -hmm. go ahead. It's it's even breaking down those technical aspects of of our sports is something that's a big priority of ours. Because ultimately, a lot of people are looking at these sports with Western eyes on, right? Mm -hmm. And the techniques are different. The sports are totally different. So this is a conversation we have about Dambe all the time. And people are like, oh, is this, um, this isn't technical. I'm like, no, if you know what you're looking at, you can see a whole lot of technical activity here. Um, this is a sport where there's no blocking with the glove. So you, you can live or die by your head movement. You can live or die by your foot placement. Mm -hmm. um, and you see this, you see this done really well. And it's something that we definitely need to do more of in terms of helping people understand what's at, you know what's that, what they're seeing here, mm -hmm. um, but our sports are massively technical, um, and I, I will I will have that argument with anybody who, who claims otherwise. All right. Okay. So we had a comment from Arasa Malik. Is there a dance element with the uh, Migba wrestling, mm -hmm. similar to how the uh, the server have a dancing portion in their lamb wrestling? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, in um, so there is ultimately so um, so that's as I said, that's primarily wrestling, which is um, associated with Igbo people. Um, and as you saw in some of those videos that you you played, um, there's music that comes with it, there's dancing that comes with it. Um, so the music's called um, Iberican music. I pronounce that terribly, my dad would find that hilarious. Um, but ultimately, it's traditional music. And the fighter before he fights would signal to the musicians and would dance. Um, on on winning, he would um, he would celebrate as well. So yeah, there's definitely dancing associated with with Igbo wrestling, Imba. Um, and yeah, it's quite similar to the Lam, um, yeah. which is a Senegalese style of wrestling, right. which is has a whole lot of similarities to 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 the wrestling we showcase. Okay. All right. Well, um, I want to talk about Dombe. Um, it, it, it's cool. you know everybody likes I like the wrestler every I wrestle you know with my friends but Dombe is just so strikingly unique. Yeah. Um, I, I've never seen anything like. I mean, I've heard people say, "Well, yeah, in Thailand they wrap ropes around their hand, they put glass on, and they mm -hmm. fight." Yeah, but that was two hands. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's it's so I, I've played around with some Dombe. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, me, Sam, you, uh, my buddy Sam. Uh, Dan, a couple people, and oh, nice. it is it is hard. Number number one, we have boxing gloves, so yeah. we did, I I did not have that rope. Uh, yeah. I like my face. Yeah. I want to work the next day. I'm Fair working. Enough. I'm working. <laughs> I hear you, man. Yeah. So um, so we have boxing gloves, and it was it was, you know, you think you're going to do one thing. I know how I'm going to get in there. I know how I've taken martial arts for so many years. I know what I'm going to do, and. When you're standing there and you've got your blocking hand and and, and that one fist, it, it's the game yeah. changes. Um, you feel exposed, right? You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, what is this? It is this all I have? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, right. yeah. That, that, so this is this is my shield. This, yeah, this is my yeah. shield. Yeah. Um, so so real quick, I'm, I'm going to talk about it again. So you so the so Dambe is a house of sport, correct? Yes, Dambe. And Dambay. so from what from uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I did a little research. So. Um, it was the houses were basically um, but butchers. Is that how I? They were the butcher class. Yeah. And, so, and so, at certain times they did dambe to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. So, so at its core roots, it was you know the the, the stories say that this was how they used to prepare for war. Okay. So in, in dambe, um, many of the terms are associated with warfare. Okay. So um, as you just mentioned, so the blocking hand, for example, is called. Um, the shield and then your your punching hand is called your spear um, and a knock down is called a kill so um sort of a whole you know you can see all of those associations of warfare there um 
And then through the years, as it became a, a sort of sports um, and a pastime, it was primarily done by groups of butchers in particular. Um, I can't say I know why, but it was it would it would be done again around celebrations, and then it just be, it became done um, for a way for a fighter to represent his community, represent himself, and and earn some money. Um, so you know they would travel in groups and and just go and fight. They would go and challenge. Um, the sort of the fighters from another community, they would fight in their own community. Um, and, and that's that's Dambe, that's that's the history of it. I, I was I was describing Dambe to somebody. Um here, here in the States, it, it kind of resembles the way I it resembles to me our basketball culture here in the United States. Mm. Um I, I work for um parks and recreation. So um mm. I, I work with kids and I have playgrounds and people come all the time. And back in the summertime, basketball for the for the African community and in, in America, basketball is the big draw. And from what I saw at a Dombe, you know, from Dombe matches, really resemble an African American uh, mm. basketball match for me. Mm. You got your musicians. Um, we we got DJs, you know, over mm. here. Uh, mm. You got the girls. You got the guys. You got the kids. Everybody comes. Um, there's somebody selling food. There's two barbecues, one over mm-hmm. there, one over there. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing. So you would have a neighborhood basketball team, and they would travel to a different neighborhood, um, put down some bets. You know, they'll, they'll talk trash all week. We coming to get you. Bring yeah. bring your big ballers out, you know, and so then there's money going on. All right, we're going we're gonna to put, you know, there's thousands of dollars put on these games, yeah. um, you know, sometimes. And and this is how some of these these young men in, in these communities in America that's how they eat. They go, you know, summertime mm-hmm. they go from different communities, different communities. It's for the clout, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm 63rd Street. 63rd Street is the best. And all 58th Street said you can't have nothing for them. Yeah. So um, so I so I could definitely see um, how how that you know how, how that there's a correlation there um, yeah. with that. Um, one of the things now you, you mentioned you mentioned the lamb uh, rustlers. And one of the similarities that, you know, from an untrained eye is I saw uh, a lot of charms, I believe. Over mm-hmm. here, we call them grigris. I don't know if that's uh, the yeah, same. charms, medicine, yeah. Medicine. Depending on who you're speaking to, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I have a short video on, from your page where one of your, uh, one of your fighters talks about uh, some medicine. Let me see if I can pull that up. One second here. Of course, it doesn't want to come up. Oh, here we go. Siku on in a team of common and eight, no matter ten. Siku on in a team of common and eight, no matter ten. You must have unlike you, Kumi. A man is sooner than the son at the team of common or some woman at the end of the year. One of the Kumadagani, one of the Magani in the Eden Nam, the Miki and Panidishi and Guru was under Gaja to Edamun Sashik and Allah and a team of common and Shimak and team of common and encouraged him like you at Chicken. Mubakaba to Munjagiran wasa idan mun babu wa'in nan ba za kai wasa ba saboda sai kana da wa'in nan alamun shine ka cika dan wasa in kana da wa'in nan za ka dauko su ka zo kai wasa ba wai za ka je da hannun ka haka ba wasa ne na maza kowa da abin da ya taka kai ka take na ka nima na take na okay so um so tell us a little bit about that the, the medicine aspect yeah. of it yeah it's it's powerful man it's ultimately um, as I said before, these these are not sports in the sense of these are not sports in the way basketball is a sport, in the way that uh, soccer or football is a sport. This is this goes so much deeper than that. These are these are expressions of culture of deep held traditions, um, and you see you see things like that. So the 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 elements of um, of magic of medicine or whatever you want to call it in Dambe in particular are just a reflection of that. So um, fighters, they, they have all sorts of spiritual augmentation, if you will. Um, and these are charms that you know, somebody might have carried for how many days from a village. Um, they've gone and consulted um, with a man of the Quran or a man of, of native religion. Um, and he's given them a special thing which they put in one of those pouches for protection. Um, so it's massively interesting. It's it's and it's there's all sorts of different rules around it. So for example, when we were filming uh, that piece that you just showed there, 
um, you see behind there was that big pile of, um, of rubbish, basically, where some, where which is like just in, right there in the community. So some of the fighters do stuff in it sometimes. And as we were filming it, um, we w when we were going to film it on there, one of the fighters tapped me and was like, "Yo, oh, guy, I can't go up there." Um, and I was like, "Oh, what's up? What, what's the issue?" He's like, "Oh, my my charm is not allowed to go there. Like it won't. It will if if I go up there, my charm will stop working." And he oh. couldn't do it. Like I said, and he was he wasn't like, I you know he he wanted to be in this thing. He really wanted to do it. He was excited. He he'd been filming with him the whole day, but he was like, "I I cannot do that." Because of the significance of what what it wow. means to, to my charm, so these are things that people believe in deeply, deeply. It's not a gimmick. It's not a joke. It's yeah. not. This is serious belief which has been held for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. Yeah, uh, it's 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 cool to see it. It's to see it alongside sport, to see it alongside right. music, to see it alongside dancing. So yeah, it's it's hugely significant. Uh, I lo I love that. I love that. Uh, tell us about. Trying to get a picture up now. It's not popping up though. I, I'll, I'll let it go. Um, so you had some masquerades. Mm. Um, uh, uh, before there he is. Uh, you had a masquerade come out before. I believe this was the Battle of Lagos. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Tell, tell us about this masquerade and it's the significance of of him and what he did. Yeah. So just you know, um, talking about how how much we want the culture to be a part of what we do. Um, it's nice to be able to make you know little cultural nods like that. So um, the masquerade there, the Ayo masquerade, which that one is called in particular, um, Ayo. Um, my pronunciation is so off. People in Nigeria love to laugh at me. Um, <laughs> so that masquerade in particular is native to Lagos, in particular native to Lagos Island. So that's like the the masquerade of Lagos. So every year, Lagos do a big annual event. Um, where hundreds of these masquerades walk through a certain part of the city. Um, and historically, these masquerades would come out, and mas masquerades are considered to be um, deities, so, so to be a representation of deities, a representation of, the, of beings not of this world. Mm -hmm. And they would come out um, to escort a chief or uh, a big man, as we would say in Nigeria, okay. To, to, the after, to the afterlife when he's died. So huge significance, very important in, in Yoruba religion in particular, um, or that masquerade in particular. Um, and so, yeah, so it was just considering we're doing a big event in Lagos, considering that the, the AO masquerade is of Lagos in terms of it's, that's the only place in Nigeria you will see it. Um, and considering these are warriors who are about to step on, on the sacred sand and fight, it just, made sense for us to be able to showcase that part of um, the culture alongside it. Mm -hmm. So um, the masquerades come in troops of three. They are, there's very strict um, rules around the showcase of the masquerade. Mm -hmm. So they're not allowed to be shown after dark. Um, their special clothing is made fresh for each time they come out. Wow. Um, and they have like a troop leader who calls out sort of incantations in Yoruba, um, which they follow. So okay. there's like a special drum troupe who come with them, who sort of play the drums. And the masquerades were just there to just show that um, we're, we're proud of the culture of Nigeria and, and in all of its forms. Um, and, and that was that. Wow, thank you. Thank you very much, man. Um, so now I have one more video. It's it's a compilation of some Dombe. Because again, Dombe is it's, it's my favorite. Um, it's so so dynamic. Um, I, I think I, I think that's what the crowd, you know, the crowd over here wants that, you know, like they they, they want to see knockouts. Um, so I'm I'm gonna play one more video. Um hopefully it'll play of some Dombe highlights, and then uh and then then we're gonna wrap it up and, and head off. Okay, let's see if I can get this to play. an ancient form of fighting native to Nigeria. Historically, Dambe was fought by groups of traveling fighters searching for honor and glory. 
now they compete in the African Warriors Fighting Championship, which is taking African fighting to the world. In Dambé, the goal is to deliver a knockout known as the kill. The rules are simple, kill or be killed. The primary weapon in Dambé is the fist of the fighter's dominant hand. Man, that Dombe, bro. Yeah. I got I got one question. One thing I don't understand, right? So when you have a knockdown, right? Mm. Somebody always comes in without within two seconds and picks that dude up off the ground. <laughs> what, yeah. can, can you let like if I get knocked out, I want you to let me sit for a minute. Let me get my breath. Why, why do they rush in so fast and stand that man up sometimes before his legs even come underneath of him? Yeah, it's uh, I mean it's funny. It's um it's a brotherhood, man. I, I, as I mentioned, these these are fighters who are competing for for houses, technically. So you have um, some of the big houses are Guru Mada, Kudu, um, and Arwa. So um, these guys are, you know, these guys are brothers in the sense that they sleep together. So you just don't want to see your brother on the ground. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and you might notice in, in Dambe, um, there might be a knockdown, and you notice there's fight. They're, they're all showmen, right? So like somebody will knock somebody down. And step over them, which I always, I, I it always makes me laugh. It's like you know, it's, it's sort of signifying like this is Alan, Alan Iverson. Alan Iverson did that uh, to uh, Jermaine Lou in a basketball game, and it was like for years we talked about yeah. that. And, and so yeah. I, I understand the step over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um, it's just yeah. So basically, you don't want to be on the ground. Yeah, your the fighter who just knocked you out is going to step over you, and that's just going to rub the salt into the wound. Yeah. People have seen you knocked out, and now this guy's just discarded you and stepped over your body, you know? So, um, yeah. That's, that's if I it. get knocked out, I'm going to need you to leave me on a minute, on the ground for a minute. <laughs> Let me get my win, and then you can help me get up. You know, I don't care if you step over. I'm out. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. If you, um, I'm, I'm already if you out. out to, to, to compete in an event, I'll be sure to, to make sure we <laughs> left on the ground. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please. Okay, so we have a comment from uh, JM from our... Uh, from our YouTube page. He says he's more of a wrestler himself. And in Haiti, uh, there's a wrestling style named ping, uh, which, it, which means a trapper. It's, it's catch wrestling. And he said, it's, it's pretty much exactly the same um, as he's seen. So I, I'm assuming since he's from Haiti, that there's uh you know, a possible link from, you know, from, from the slave trade. Um, mm. You know, how, how else would that have gotten over there? So uh, maybe, maybe that's something for me to, uh, to research a little bit and, and see if we can find a link between, uh, you know, Nigerian wrestling and, and, and Haitian Haitian wrestling. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. I think I can't say I know know much about Haitian wrestling in particular, but I do know that um, they there are examples of or hieroglyphs and in, in ancient Egyptian pyramids of um, what looks like wrestling and also what looks like dambe. Um, and so there are some questions or some people think that. Um, just over the years, as sort of migration and as people moved out, 
um, these the sort of traditions of wrestling in very you know in different forms depending on the country or culture um, just ended up in different countries. So um, it would make sense that that um, the traditions yeah. went went with our brothers who who went over to Haiti. So I can yeah. imagine that. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, Maxwell, we're coming up on forty-five minutes here. This is a, a, almost exactly how how long I wanted to keep you know keep this going, brother. Um, I, I want to thank you for joining us. This has been an amazing amazing event for me personally. I learned I learned a lot. Hopefully, um, our fans learned a lot. Um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you with one one question here. Um, a final question: What do you want? Um, where do you see African uh, Warrior Championships? Your your legacy when when you're when you're gone when when you're not doing this anymore, and people talk about you and your organization, um, what do you want them to say? What do you want them to feel about it? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I, I want people to say that we took um, African sports African sports to new heights, um, and we did that by staying true to ourselves. So we built the first um, sort of truly and uniquely African, truly black um, combat sports organization that can stand on a global level next to a UFC, next to a one championship. Um, and we were able to not only do that or whilst we're doing that, take these sports who, which have such amazing traditions, which are so engaging, um, and we're able to take those sports to new heights and, and give athletes who are coming from some of the most difficult backgrounds, who are coming from Nigeria, um, a country where a lot of people are living um, in poverty um, and become superstars. So that, that's, that's the legacy. I want to be able to take our sports to new heights, both locally and internationally. And I want our fighters to be recognized for the heroes they are. Um, and that's it. I'd, I'd be happy with that. I'd be I happy. like that. Uh, tell, tell the world how they can contact you. Mm. Yeah, I would say um, our website is AfricanWarriorsFC.com. Um, we post our content on Facebook, African Warriors Fighting Championship. Um, Instagram, Afri at African Warriors FC. YouTube, African Warriors Fighting Championship. Um, and yeah, we're, we're very responsive. So just shoot us. Um, a DM or an inbox if you have any questions. Um, I'd also say we get loads. We've had lots of messages about um, our T-shirts, about the stuff we we have, our African Warriors gear. Um, we're about to put that up for sale on our website. Um, we also have some cool, like, training-style vests as well that are coming out. Um, so to keep a lookout on our pages for that. Um, okay. Support the cause, like, you know, represent wherever you are um, I'm, I'm definitely going to grab a t-shirt you y'all need to start coming y'all need to come out with some african warrior uh hand wraps yeah yeah they're on the wrap so they can yeah, so they yeah, wrap yeah, definitely up. man definitely yeah. um so yeah i would just say um ultimately we we're an early organization we we've, we've done a lot in terms of you know we've pushed this out over a year and a half um and we've got a big way to go and really excited about that and ultimately Thank you for for the platform. Um, thank you for all of your support so far. I, I, you know, I I see all of the comments. I see all of the shares. Um, so you know, we we know that you guys have been um, really rocking with us from the get go, um, and I, I really respect that and I appreciate that. We, we 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 see your hustle. We're a new organization as well. We 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 see your hustle. We recognize it, and so uh, you know, as they say over here, real recognize real. It's definitely. It's definitely. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much, uh, Max, for, for joining us. Um, Hama World, thank you for joining us as well. And uh, I, I hope everyone enjoyed themselves. And um, have a good day, Max. Cool. You too, man. Yeah. Great to speak. All the best. You too, brother. So thank you, folks, for joining us for our very first uh, Hama Live interview series. Um, hopefully, we're going to be able to do this again. I, I've, got a, I've got one in the works coming up. Um, the next one I'm hoping is going to be about uh, African blacksmithing. So hopefully you folks will be able to hang around, stick around next week and uh, join us for that. Thank you very much and you have a nice day.